he always slacked me and he say, <laughs> hey, my props article's done. And I didn't even need to read it. I knew exactly what would be in there, what would be leading us off. It's in there every week. It wins every week. Jameer Gibbs, longest rush over. I mean, tell the people why. I'm sure they've heard your explanation before, but tell them why we love this prop. Yeah, I think this is the fourth or fifth week in a row where we're playing this. The one thing I will mention is there's no line available on this yet, which is a little suspicious because there are yes, other rushing odd. lines available for Gibbs in this game and Montgomery. We're not waiting on any key injury news that would lead them to leave this off. So I don't know what's going on there. I will mention that last year, the one longest rush prop that we were playing over and over again was Nick Chubb. And there was a week where it was just not available for no good reason after it had been a winner week after week. So I don't know what's going on, but hopefully we get this line. If it's available at 17 and a half yards or lower, I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs' longest rush against the Cowboys. He's hit 20 or more yards in seven of his last nine games. And if you listen to last week's show, we talked about how we thought this was a matchup-proof prop and we were going to put it to the test against the Vikings because that stat that we were talking about earlier with the Browns giving up the most highest rate of 15 or more yards on the ground the vikings give up the lowest rate of 15 or more yards on the ground so they're the defense you don't want to play longest rush props against but we went ahead and played it anyway because it's jameer gibbs and sure enough he still hit the over so this doesn't matter you can't yeah, stop this, jameer gibbs this, yeah it's there yeah he it's matchup proof he did it against the vikings he did it against the bears earlier in the week who also rate top or early in the season who also ranked top five in that stat Dallas, another really good defense, but they're in the middle of the pack in this statistic. They do give up some long runs, and so it's, they're not a defense that you're scared to play a longest rush prop to begin with. And so, you know, this is just one where we don't really need any more explanation than that. We're just going to keep riding it out through the rest of the season. I do think this game, this game is really interesting. It's not on the main slate for DFS, which is a little bit disappointing, but this game is interesting because everything that jared goff doesn't like uh that's what the that's what the cowboys defense does they play a lot of man and they get pressure now to be fair to him this one will at least be indoors so we're taking one of those things out yep. of the equation he hates playing outdoors if it was outdoors pressure and man coverage then they might score zero points but the pressure part of it the um the the man coverage like that kind of leads you to believe we're going to see some jared goff mistakes especially early on, especially with what we've seen from him more recently. And I think that this game could get a little bit out of hand. Like I would, if, if you're giving me the options of, of a close game or Cowboys blowout or Lions blowout, Lions blowout is far and away, not, uh, you know, my least likely option here. And I think the Cowboys blowout is not that wild, not that much different than a close game here. That is actually good for Gibbs. He might not get as many rushes, and for this prop, you want a lot of volume. But he's probably going to be on the field more just because of the way the Lions run their offense if that is the game script that we see. So that might be a reason to, to like him a little bit more here. Also might be a reason to like him a little bit more if you're playing single-game DFS than David Montgomery if you're trying to pick between, between those people. We have another great matchup here, another matchup you've been targeting uh, all season long. And that is Devonta Smith, longest receiving over. What do you like about that? Yeah, we're playing Devonta Smith's longest reception over 21 and a half yards against the Arizona Cardinals. I actually love this line. It came in a little bit lower than I was expecting. So this is a, a good value for us here with this line. You know, we've been playing this prop against Arizona quite a bit this season with a lot of success. They rank dead last in the league and completion rate allowed at 15 or more yards downfield. So when you're playing Arizona, you want to attack downfield. So I'm always looking for who gets the most targets. If somebody stands out as seeing a high percentage of targets down the field and they're going up against Arizona, it's an automatic play. This week, I had to dig a little bit deeper because both Smith and A.J. Brown are used downfield at a pretty similar overall rate. I think you could certainly justify playing both of them in this matchup or just playing Brown if you wanted to go that way. If, if you're only choosing one, though, I'm going to side with Smith based on Arizona's coverage scheme because they're one of these defenses that leans very heavily on too high coverage. The second highest rate in the league, 54% um, rate where they're playing with too high coverages. The Eagles against those coverages tend to favor Smith a little bit more than Brown. He leads the team 
with a 26% target share versus too high and leads the team with 53% of their downfield targets against too high. So when Arizona is in that standard coverage that they typically use, we think we're going to Smith is going to see more targets. So although I think you're totally justified in playing both of these and hoping to win both of them, if you're going to, if you want to play just one, I think based on that coverage scheme, Smith is a little bit uh, better option for us. Yeah, I can see that for sure. I also think the Eagles are one of a lot of offenses this week who find themselves in a get right spot. Yep. And if you're, if you're struggling heading into the playoffs and you have the opportunity to play the Cardinals, for instance, then that would be, that would seem like a good, re, a good time to get your offense moving the way that you would hope that they would be. And so this could be, this could be a pretty good spot for them as well. All right, moving on to Bijan Robinson, Bijan Robinson, you know, he bounced back two weeks ago, was heartbreak bounced back last week with a pretty good game in a situation where we expect him to have a good game. But now this week you like the under on his rushing yards what what about that do you like yeah i'll say that i'm sort of tentatively liking the under because this line actually came in quite a bit lower than i was expecting uh the highest line that i saw for Beatles robinson's rushing yards was 50 and a half yards which is about 10 yards lower than it's been for the most part over the last month to six weeks so this line has dropped significantly it was actually under 50 in a couple spots so it seems like the line may already be shifting down so uh, w given where it's at i'm gonna say I'd lean under, but I, you know, if you want to just stay away because this is a bad game and you're not going to be watching, I think that also makes sense. But to dive into a little bit more, the reason I like it, it's mostly about Chicago's defense. Um, they've just been a nasty run defense. I don't think be because they've sort of struggled overall, I don't think they've gotten enough attention for how good this run defense has been. They're contacting ball carriers at or behind the line of scrimmage at the second highest rate in the league. And in this particular matchup, it's it's a it's a rough matchup for the Falcons because they're allowing contact rate at or behind the line of scrimmage at a 50% rate. That ranks 27th. So with the Falcons as road underdogs, really bad matchup in the trenches for them. And given the usage of Robinson that we've seen the past couple weeks, it, it just seems like an all-around bad spot to play him. So I definitely lean under, but like I said, I, I was hoping this line would be maybe five to seven yards higher than it is. So I, I don't love it at this spot. I would say it sort of falls into a category of if I were watching the game and wanted something, I would play it, but I don't have any plans of watching Falcons bears in week 17. So personally I'm, I'm going to stay away. <laughs> Why not? It seems like it's going to be a great game. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the bears defense. I, the bears defense as a whole in the back half of the season, because their past defense wasn't, it's gotten better. The bears defense as a whole is pretty good. Um, this kind of, this roster as a whole is pretty good. The offensive line is pretty good. Uh, just throwing that out there. This team, if they don't give away two wins is like squarely in the playoff contention. Um, that makes the decision they have to make this off season with likely the number one pick. We'll see if the Panthers can, you know, keep keep trying to put together wins but likely number one pick that makes that that makes that very interesting the thing about b john robinson and we had this we had this talk a little bit rich and i did last week about how when we were looking at b john robinson and he was getting high touch totals and he was getting high carry totals we were like okay so he's getting you know he's getting what he what what we think he should get as you know clearly the best runner in that backfield i like tyler algier he had a really good rookie season b john robinson is a is the best runner but if you look at the splits of the touches it really wasn't that favorable to b john and so if we have a situation here where the falcons just aren't able to run and maybe they're not running as much then we might see that take hold again where his touch his touch total does not look the way we think it should look because those splits still haven't changed where we're really favoring him in the running game so there, there are a lot of concerns here for Bijan robinson for sure 